Hi friends, I saw this skirt on one of my favorite YouTubers channel and I thought $375, no way. So I went over to my Goodwill store and picked up a pair of green leather pants and pulled them apart and this is my next upcycle. everyone welcome to the urban sewing society where we bring fashion and creativity to your neighborhood my name is jen and i am the urban sewist in today's up cycle i'm so excited about it. but before we get started don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and click on that bell so that you can get an update every time i release a new video and i am so excited to let you know that we have over 700 followers when i reach a thousand i am going to give away three prizes to three of my followers so please what are you waiting for click that subscribe button right now and share this with someone so that they can get an opportunity to win a prize so i'm really excited thank you all for tuning in every week and following me on instagram and on facebook love you much if you follow me on instagram you probably saw it in my stories and maybe saw a few clips there um, it's something that I've wanted to try for a while. One of my favorite YouTubers, Karen Britchick, had on this leather quilted skirt that I just thought was so, so super cute. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, I could DIY that. And so I went out to Goodwill. I found myself a pair of leather pants. I ripped them up. I started trying to do the quilting. And can I tell you? It was one of those times. I mean, I cannot tell you how I struggled through this. This video I started taping maybe a month ago. Yeah, I had to put the project to the side and just step away from it. And sometimes it gets like that when we're upcycling and you've got this great idea and you're working on it and then you hit a roadblock and then it just doesn't turn out the way you love or what that's gonna make you feel like oh it's just so great that was this project that was this project the whole time but i got through it i got through it and i want you to see some of the mistakes that i made and how it ended up turning out in the end so all right let's get into it I started off with this pair of green leather pants that I got from Goodwill. They were really soft leather. I began first by taking apart using my seam ripper very carefully the inside seams of the pants. And this is because the hip area was pretty wide and it was less angled than the inside leg plus it gave me more fabric to work with um, I was really unsure about how this was gonna look I've not sewn leather before and I've also hadn't have never had to take stitches out of leather but it was pretty easy it's not something you can rip you really have to take your time so once I took the inner seams out I started to pull the lining out I was really happy that these pants were lined because that meant I didn't have to get other fabric to line the skirt or the top and so I laid it out and as you can see the widest part of the pants is up by the hip area the thigh area and I figured that this would be the space where I could maneuver my pattern pieces around so I had a pattern that I used to create a skirt from. Um, I made that out of some newsprint fabric and I started playing around with the fabric a little bit to see how much space I had to, to lay out these pattern pieces. And I knew right then it was gonna be pretty challenging. As you can see, I still have the waistband attached to the pants. And this is when I realized I need to take that waistband off. I took some scissors and I cut the waistband really close to the stitching to where the elastic was inside the casing. 
the great thing about working with leather is it doesn't fray. So I didn't have to worry about loose edges or leaving room so that I could turn it under or anything like that. But I did have to maneuver quite a bit just to get really close to the stitching. So um, you can see I'm cutting it here. Okay, here you see where I cut really close to the waistband. Now I'm laying everything out, trying to assess which pattern pieces are gonna fit on what. I tried to take the back pattern piece and put that on one of the legs, but it intersected too much with the seam going down the side and I didn't want that seam in there. So what I ended up doing was folding over one leg and using that one top part of the leg for the back of the skirt. And so I still have to play around with it to make sure that the whole pattern piece fits. Remember, when you're quilting or using fabric where you're adding batting and you're having to sew through it all, it's going to shrink up. So I had to cut outside of the actual pattern piece in order to make sure that I had enough fabric to make the skirt fit. And so that's really a challenge. So I just went back and forth with this. And this is when I realized, okay, <laughs> I might have bitten off a little bit more than I could chew. All right, so what I ended up having to do is to open up the leg, the side seams, um, just a, about halfway down so that I could cut the back piece of the skirt out of one leg and then I ended up cutting the front of the skirt from the bottom of the pants leg. So uh, I'm going to skip forward to that so that you can see how that ended up working out because as you can see the front of the skirt does not fit any way I turn it it just it doesn't fit even though these pants were like a size 18 or 20 they just weren't they weren't big enough so here I used the bottom part of the pants leg and that's where I cut the front part of the skirt and even though it was supposed to be on the fold I just sewed a seam right down the center and then I cut out the back then I laid out the lining and I did the same thing. I cut my front lining, my back lining, and used the same pattern pieces. Uh, that was much easier. It seemed like there was more fabric in the lining than there was of the actual fabric. Next, I cut the zipper out of the pants. I cut it really close to the stitching because I wanted to use the zipper in the skirt. Then I cut the top out using an old pattern that I have, put that to the side and started to cut the batting for the skirt. And you know, this uh, was pretty challenging because I only cut one layer of batting first and you'll see later why this became such a headache. Um, I put that to the side, put the skirt to the side and then I started to sew my top and the top was pretty easy um, since it's only a front if you notice I don't know if you remember from the beginning of the video the top was only a front portion it was like a halter top it the, the back is completely out so it's kind of the opposite of a vest or you know a vest turned around and so that was pretty easy now this I'm showing you because I did try to do the stitching with just one layer of batting and I did not like the way it turned out. It looked too flat. I looked in the mirror. I didn't like it. You know, here's a close up of it. It just, I just didn't feel like the design came out really good. So what did I do? Took my handy dandy seam ripper and I ripped every one of those stitches out and I went home and went to bed because <laughs> I was so tired after I finished doing this. This was such a painstaking process and I was so concerned about leaving holes in the fabric, but you know what, at this point, I didn't even care. I didn't like the way the design looked. I needed to get back over to Joann's and buy some more batting and call it a day. So this is what it looked like afterwards. 
So I ran over to Joanne's really, really quick. I knew exactly where I was going and what I was looking for. And I went over to the batting and they did not have the heavier batting. Um, I found this um, batting that I thought was gonna work and then I just decided to stick with what I had already and use what I had and add on to it. So I used this all natural cotton batting and um, it was pretty expensive. And that's why I was trying to not, you know, spend a whole lot of money. These were $12.99 a package. And of course, Jack said, get it. So <laughs> went on ahead and got it. All right, so I wanted you to see how this looks. Um, these are, this is the result of having sewn through the leather and you know it is what it is so now I'm using three layers of batting up underneath and I'm gonna sew through that and see how I like it uh, I tried to kind of you know massage some of the holes out with my hand that didn't work at this point what's done is done it's time to move forward because sewing with leather is a little tricky, I used newsprint on the top part of the leather so that the foot would move across the leather smoothly. I found that my foot was getting a little stuck at times, not all the time, but I just went on ahead and used the newsprint and made the designs. I don't know if this made it easier or harder, but it was difficult, period. My sense is that when they created this skirt, they used a big machine or a machine that didn't have, you know, it had a wider neck. It could accommodate the skirt. But here I am trying to just do this at my studio and make the best of it. So I made a little design. Don't really like the way the design came out, but I kept going because I really wanted to try to make the best of this. So I made some little waves. Mine, my design is not as intricate as the original skirt, but I didn't want it to be exact. I just wanted it to be something that I liked. So I went on ahead and kept stitching and um, sewed through the paper, then onto the three layers of batting. Once I did that and I was satisfied, I started to pull the newsprint off of the leather and you will be able to see after I pull this off that it was so much more cushiony <laughs> so it had much more of a quilting effect when I looked at it in the mirror I could really see the quilting effect from a distance and that was the thing that was important to me not so much that the skirt looked like the original but that you would be able to see the quilted design from a distance and you can so that made me happy. So you see here, there's much more indentation. There were some areas that overlapped. I took my seam ripper, picked those out, and then I just sewed over them. And I, I like the way this turned out. Now, the front of the skirt, I used three layers of batting, and the back of the skirt, I only used two layers, which is fine. You know, again i really just wanted to get through it at this point i wasn't happy with the way it was looking but i wanted you guys to see how you know sometimes you try an upcycle and it doesn't turn out exactly the way you like but you know sometimes you end up getting something better sometimes it's something that you know you're just over it now even up close you can see the little dots from where I previously took the stitches out, but from a distance, you can't see it at all. So I'm happy. Next, I'm finishing up the top. I put darts in the bust area, also darts at the waistline. And then I used the batting up underneath it. And I only used two layers of batting for the top. Again, this is a top. I didn't want it to be super, super thick, and I wasn't sure how it would lay, and since it does only fit on the front of the body, I, was, I didn't want it to be too thick. So I went on ahead and I put the darts in from the bust and the bottom. Fortunately, I had quite a few leftover pieces of leather, so I was able to piece some pieces together 
for the waistband and you see me cutting the strips here. I did want a wider waistband at least about an inch and a half to two inches wide because I wanted a higher waistline on the skirt. Um, I didn't want something that was really thin. I wanted it to lay down. So I cut my pieces of my waistband and then I stitched those together. I did not use any batting on the inside of the waistbands. I just stitched it together and used that for the top of the skirt. So really quickly, you see me going through uh, stitching the back of the skirt together. That is where I was gonna put the zipper. Um, I did not stitch the batting into the seams. And then next I'm doing the design on the front piece. And so I just did something really simple, just little wavy lines that crossed over. I kept it really, really simple because again, <laughs> I was so over it at this point. I started feeling better. I was getting closer to the end. I trimmed around the top, some of the batting off, and then I went to create the lining for my skirt, the back, the front, leaving open the back for the zipper. And I put that to the side. Um, next, I am sewing together the waistband, those four pieces of leftover fabric that I had. I just sewed it together. I made the waistband a little bit longer than it needed to be. This is what I had left over from the pants for the lining. I just simply took the front piece, laid it on top of the lining, and sewed it around. So here I tried the skirt on. Um, I can't remember if I had sewn the zip. No, I don't think I, I did. I sewed the zipper in by now and I only sewed one side of the skirt together because I wanted to see just how much room I had. And I had a lot of room left over. I mean, pretty significant, about an inch to an inch and a half. So I turned it right side out just so that I could get a sense of what it was looking like. And again, I can tell you, I, I didn't feel great about it. Um, at this point, I've decided that I'm going to use the leftover leather to cover up some of the flaws in the skirt. I think that's going to make me feel better. But I'm also going to take the skirt in quite a bit, and then I'm going to add the waistband. We've got the skirt, which um, I did install the zipper. I didn't do an invisible zipper. I did a regular zip. I did take the skirt in on each side to fit me better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it on one more time. If I feel like I'm comfortable with this, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the sides because I can always use this extra leather. The lining for the skirt is finished. Lining is done. It just needs to be pressed. And then once I create the waistband, I'll attach this. And here is what I ended up with for the top. Um, again, you know, it's okay. It's okay. It's not completely what I would have wanted, but I think once I add the straps, so I'm gonna use, remember that leftover waistband? I'm gonna use this for the straps around the back, for here, and for here. So I'll see how that works. Okay. And then I also have, that's my waistband. This is leftover lining. We'll see if I need that. And then these pieces are what I'm going to use to camouflage some of the errors. So. It's not gonna be a complete loss, <laughs> but it's definitely not what I thought it was going to be. So I'm gonna use all these leftover pieces to camouflage some of the errors in the skirt. Okay, so I just tried on, it's <laughs> my ring. I just tried on the skirt and when I tell you all, I'm feeling a little better about this. Not thoroughly convinced, but I'm feeling a lot better. So I'm gonna take these stitches out. I am glad I gave myself some extra room because 
you know, when you add batting and you do quilting, you do tend to lose a lot. So you can see how much extra fabric I have inside the seam. But this is good because I can use this also to help with the flaws. So all is not lost. I'm gonna cut closer to the seam here. Uh, I may run another seam just on the inside because even when I tried this on, I had all this thickness in there and I know that's gonna make a difference. So I'm gonna sew this just on the inside. I'm gonna take this stitch out and then I'm going to top stitch so that I don't have a bulky seam. So I'm gonna run a stitch down this side and down that side to keep this laid open nice and flat because obviously I can't press it. And then once I take this stitch out here, these stitches all the way down, I'm gonna do the same here. Run a stitch about 5 eighths away from that original stitch all the way down and then I'm gonna top stitch it. So what you'll see on the inside is you'll see a stitch down here and a stitch down here and I'll, um, I'll show you how I'm doing that. I'm feeling good about this, you guys, feeling really good. This is my, this is the piece that I'm using. There we go. This is the piece that I'm using for the waistband, and obviously this is gonna be folded over like that. I'm not putting any padding in here or anything. I'm just gonna sew this on, turn it over, close out the ends, and I'm gonna do a top stitch around the top of the waistband. That will make it super easy. I also found that sewing on the leather, it didn't get stuck. My presser foot moves pretty smoothly over it, although I'm using my household machine on the rest of the project, it still, I think, is gonna be okay. So wish me luck. Okay, so this is my other baby, which I have not introduced you guys to yet. This is my uh, Husqvarna Viking. Uh, it is the Opal 690, um, and this is the machine that I use when I sew at home. I didn't feel like going to the studio today, so I am here, and I am sewing through this thickness. Um, so we've got two layers of batting, and then two layers of leather, and then three layers of batting in the front. So if you remember... Um, I only put three layers in the front, two in the back. Uh, I actually started running short. And the whole idea of this was to keep the cost down, just to create this, this skirt um, and top to keep the cost down. So I didn't want to buy any more batting and the back actually looked okay. So I'm gonna sew through the rest of this. I'm taking it really slow because this machine has a monitor on it if you push the machine too far and over stress the motor it will stop just like that and that's the message that you'll get so every once in a while if I get to a point where it's too thick it'll stop I have to wait for it to go away and then I can start up again the really nice thing one of the really nice things this has so many nice things about it but one of the great things about the machine is that it does a lock stitch at the end. And so basically, and it also cuts the thread. So I mean, that is where you cut the thread. This here, if I press that, it will give a lock stitch. And then when it's done with the lock stitch, I can press that and it'll cut the thread. So I'm going to lock the stitch in. Okay, and then I am going to cut the thread. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, the needle did stop a few times as I was sewing, but for the most part, I got it in. This is the bottom of the skirt. When I stitch the design into the leather, as you can see, not so much on the back, but on the front, I went all the way to the edge. I'm not gonna make a hem by turning this up and having all that bulk at the bottom. I'm gonna take some of these stitches out so that I can fold this at least one inch. What I'll do is I'll cut back the batting one inch and then I'll fold the leather over and I'll probably just glue it because um, I could hand stitch it, but that might be a lot stitching through the leather, so I don't wanna necessarily do that. So that's my plan next, is to trim the batting 
and take the stitches out that go all the way to the edge. So I'll take these stitches out to right about here. I'll take these stitches out right there. I'll take both of these stitches out here and then I'll even off the skirt and fold it under. So the next step you'll see, you'll see the hem and then you'll see um, I'll put the waistband on and then we're going to work on that top because that top is giving me the blues. To do the hem, I cut down the inside here with the batting. I'm folding it over. I use these clips. I really, really like these clips. They are really helpful, especially when you're working with something like leather that you can't pin. So I strongly suggest, um, I will link them below, but you can get them off Amazon. They're great. I ran out of clips and I haven't sealed the bottom of the skirt yet. So I'm actually using straight pins um, through the leather, which for here is okay. I'm actually gonna pin it horizontally so that I don't poke a hole and you're able to see it. Have the skirt the waistband is on the clips are still here at the bottom I'll turn around I'm going to use a fabric glue to create the hem I do not want to spend time hand sewing this it's not what I'm trying to do and since this is kind of showing you how sometimes upcycles can go a little wrong <laughs> I just want to get done with it. I really want you guys to see this because I have some plans for it. I really would like to wear it this weekend. All right, so here is the little, I'm going to call this like a harness vest. I don't know if it's, I don't know what it's called really. I, it's kind of a vest, but it's not really a vest because it doesn't close in the front. It really only sits in the back. I mean, it really only sits on the front of the body. What I'm gonna end up doing is this across the back, and I'll need to measure that on maybe another one here. So this here, that there, and then using these extra straps here for from the shoulder back. I don't want these pieces sticking up on the front. I want them attached so that they lay down. So I decided to use some hardware on this um, kind of harness top thing that goes with the skirt. And I had some, I had a project that I was working on. Uh, you probably saw it on my Instagram, but it was a men's jacket. It's a denim jacket with patchwork. And I ended up getting these snaps off Amazon. I will, um, link the uh, link below so that if you want to try them out but anyway I have some assorted um, different kinds of snaps and I'm just gonna use uh, these on the side and so this part is done I used the straps uh, the straps for the back um, are from the waistband and um, I stitch one side and I'm gonna connect the other side using these little snaps and um, I think that's about it. I have uh, glued the hem in place. Uh, I just have a little bit more here to go and um, we'll be done. Next time you see it, it'll be on me. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, here is the big reveal, and um, I like the way it turned out. I was pleasantly surprised when I put it on the vest slash harness slash whatever you want to call it. 
there were some design properties in it that I would definitely do different next time when it comes to the fit but you know obviously ran out of um, fabric and just really wanted to get it finished because it wasn't a hundred percent what I liked but overall you know I love the idea um, I would definitely give myself more room in the bust um, I felt like you know the top could have been a little bit longer because I kind of feel like I'm holding it down a little bit uh, maybe I could even snap it to the waistband but overall I like it I wore it to brunch today with my girlfriends they gave me tons of compliments you know I, I really think it's still such a cute you know a leather quilted skirt is a cute idea for the winter time and I would definitely do this again I'd actually like to do it a little bit longer so anyway hope you guys enjoyed it I hope you got some tips from this I hope you got some ideas and maybe you'll even try this yourself so don't forget follow me on Instagram for more updates follow my stories and I'll see you guys next week bye